Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is episode 130. There's 130 episodes so far of me building this Zenith Super Duty. Hopefully these videos are helpful to you. In this episode, I am going to finish up my doors for the Super Duty. Now the first thing you guys need to know is there was a lot of work to get the door frames and the glass to the point where it's at now. And all that is shown on a previous video. So this is just kind of finishing up the doors. Now the very first step I'm going to do is I've noticed I've never cleaned up the very edge of the door. So I'm gonna use 320 sandpaper and then 400 and then get this edge nice and smooth. The first one I'm using here is 320. And we'll curve this, this little corner right here. We'll just make that a little bit rounder. And I've got a brand new piece of 400 here. Now I'm working to get this edge nice and smooth but I'm also going to tilt the, the block and get the very corners just to kind of knock off that 90 degree sharp edge. So this will just kind of round it very slightly and make it smoother to the touch, not as sharp. And just all around more gooder. So I'm getting the edge of this one. There we go. All right, now wipe off the dust. And now we have a real nice uh, smooth edge. I've done the 320 and 400 all the way around. And now I'm gonna do the last step here of 600. Not really sure it's necessary to go to 600 because it's pretty smooth with 400. But I think the 600 will really just Give it a real nice polish. And it only takes a minute to do. Well, this clip has no audio because I realized as I was editing this that the little battery in the, the uh, DJI cordless mic that goes into the iPhone was dead. <laughs> so but what I was explaining here is that I've read so many times on the forums where people have issues taking this tape off of the window and it leaves a residue behind. And this is not rocket science, guys. Heat it up with a hair dryer, and it will peel right off and leave zero residue left on your window. So here I'll show you. I'm just going to use this little hair dryer. Now, don't use a heat gun because a heat gun is too hot, and you could damage your, uh, your window. But this is just a regular hair dryer. I heat it up as I go, and look how nice it pulls off. It leaves zero residue behind. The next step in getting this glass ready to go is to remove this permanent marker that some genius decided to draw all the way around the window. Why on earth somebody would use a permanent marker to draw on a clear window is beyond me, but I had to scrub it off. And the best way I found to do it is I just used this window cleaner and a rag and scrubbed and scrubbed. Now I don't think the window cleaner did anything to dissolve the ink, but it was just a way to to get some fluid in there to not use a dry rag. I could have probably just used soap and water. That would have probably worked too because it's really just the scrubbing that gets it off. But it's not easy to do. It takes a lot of scrubbing and it probably took me about 40 minutes to go around the window and remove that marker. Okay, now we are down to the final step of getting this glass ready to rivet onto the frame. And that is removing all of this. Now these windows, I'm pretty sure are not made by Zenith. I'm sure they, they farm this out to some other manufacturer, but the quality of these is beyond terrible. 
you can see here, I mean, what it looks like is somebody put like acetone or something on it and it, it etched the, uh, I don't know what this is. It's not Lexan, polycarbonate or whatever it is. So what I have to do is sand and buff all this out. Now I've already gone around almost the whole perimeter while I was waiting for my little DJI microphone to charge. <laughs> so uh, you can see like the, in fact, this leading edge, I've, I did the entire thing. This entire leading edge looked like this. Um, so everything's done except the bottom here. And uh, now that my battery's charged, I will show you how I do it. All right, the very first step is to get some 400 grit sandpaper and just sand the heck out of it. And some of these I've noticed, it's, it's on this side and this side. So, and I can't, this, it's, sometimes it's actually hard to tell what side it's on, but on this one here, I can feel like a little ridge. I can feel it a little bit on both sides. So I think it might be on both sides. So I'm gonna start with this side here. This is the outside of the glass. And then uh, I'll completely do this and sand it and buff it and then turn it over and then do the other side. Now this first step of sanding with 400 is really where you're doing the work. This is where you're getting rid of that top layer that's messed up. All the other sanding we'll do after this is really just removing the scratches from sanding the first time. <laughs> I'm kind of hoping that since Zenith is adding 10,000 square foot of space to their factory, maybe some of this kind of stuff they'll start doing in-house and then have some kind of you know, say over the quality. But I remember I had to do this on my cruiser doors also. In fact, if you go way back early into my videos on this channel, um, I did make a video on how I sanded and buffed the doors on my cruiser. <laughs> I did, our, I already did the, the left door, the pilot, or the, yeah, the pilot side door on my Super Duty. I did that yesterday. And it actually wasn't too bad. There was just a few spots around the perimeter. But, man, this, this door here, it's, it's almost all the way around that I had to sand and buff. That might be uh, enough to remove it. <laughs> Let's get rid of those sanding marks. Now, from here on out, guys, I'm not going to bore you with making you watch this. But all I'm doing now is wet sanding this. And right now I'm using 600. After the 600, I'll go to 1,500, then 2,000 and then 3,000, and then 5,000, and then uh, we'll buff it out. So let me get all the sanding done, and I'll get back with you. So here is what it looks like after sanding up to 5,000 grit. Now you'll notice this whole area right here still looks pretty bad, but this is on the other side. So once I'm done buffing this, I'm going to have to flip it over and do the whole process again on the back side to, to remove that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the 3M, and this is a three-step kit. This is step one, and I'm going to, going to use this with this pad. And what I found is I've kind of taken a shortcut. Instead of using step two and then step three of this, I just go right to this. And this stuff works perfectly. So this kind of removes the scratches, this buffs and polishes it, and then it's crystal clear. So the first thing I'm going to do is put some of that on that pad and buff away. First step is done. Now I'm going to use this stuff here. Now, hopefully, I've sanded enough on this side, and once I flip it over and do the other side, it'll be perfectly clear. So I'll flip it over, do the other side, and then we'll see what it looks like. Here it is after I've done the bottom. 
you can see it is perfectly clear now. It looks really nice. So I just have to go along and do the rest of the bottom. You can kind of see from there, there, there's a spot there and pretty much all along here to the front edge. Still needs sanded and buffed. So once I do that, the glass will be done and we'll be ready to rivet it to the frame. Well, now that was a ton of work. It took me a couple hours to get the complete window done, but it is done. I have it sitting on the table now on top of the frame. I'm going to put some rivets in and start riveting. Well, these are the rivets right here that Zenith provides to rivet these windows on. They are just soft aluminum rivets. One of the things you guys will note is these are not structural rivets, so you don't want to use these to actually build the airplane. Uh, they're just meant for the, the windows. What I'm using instead are these black ones that I got on Amazon. These are 530 seconds rivets. And uh, again, they're just soft aluminum. They're not meant to be structural, but um, putting the glass on the door is not structural. And they are black, so they look a little bit better than having the silver ones. Because everything else on this airplane is, you know, army green. Nothing's really meant to be shiny. The rivets on my cruiser doors are shiny, but it looks good on the cruiser because, you know, the landing gear is polished and stuff. Now for these, uh, you see I have these metal pieces on the corner here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put rivets in all of these holes, just or most of the holes, just to align them. But I'm not going to rivet these on yet because these rivets are just a tad too short to go through this, the window, and then the frame. So I have uh, other ones coming actually later today. So probably before I finish up this video, I'll have the new rivets and I'll rivet it on and you'll see it all completely done. But for now, I'm just putting these in here just to make sure the window is all aligned before I rivet. All of the rivets are in, like I said, except for these uh, gussets on the corners, just because I'm waiting for a little bit longer rivets. So now with that done, let's get the handle put on. There's a big nut that goes on the back here. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take these out for now so I can flip this door over. All right, here's the big nut on the back. And of course, I don't have a socket big enough for this, so I will use a crescent wrench while trying not to scratch the frame. Now, our yellow handle goes on that way. So now it's locked. That way would be open and locked. We have a bolt that holds this in. And this is again, this is another weird size bolt because I don't have a socket that fits on there. All right, I forgot I do have a set of metric sockets. So Oh. This one seems to be a little bit looser than the other one. A little more play in there, but that's it. So we have the main door latch here. We have the little forward latch here. And I put uh, the word lock on there. So we remember to lock it. And now we can flip it around and put our open sticker on the outside. This is the open sticker here. It is the correct way. These are available on aircraftstickers.com or if you go to kitplaneenthusiast.com, I have these for sale on there. 
So I will put that right about, right about there. And when you guys order these stickers, I pre-cut them for you. I just roughly cut them out of the sheet that they're printed on. Because if this was on a big sheet, you really can't get it fit on there. So it's, it's pre-cut out so you can kind of fit it on there. But what you'll want to do is just peel off one side of this about halfway and then cut it off. Don't tear it off, cut it off with scissors. If you tear it off, you'll get fibers under there. Now what this allows you to do is the part that's sticky, you can kind of hold it up off the window. And then this part here, you can kind of slide around to get it positioned correctly. So I want that positioned right about there. And then once you get it positioned, stick down the, uh, the sticky side you have, that holds it in place. And then what you can do is peel off the rest of the backing and using your finger to work out any air bubbles, just press it around there like that. And then you peel off this very top layer. Come here, you. There we go. Cool. There we go. Looks nice and professional. So the door is ready to basically hang on the airplane aside from the corner gussets. All right guys, I'm going to end the video here because my rivets are not here yet and I wanna get this video done because I have a million other things to do today. Thanks for watching. If you are interested in things like that orbital polisher that I used or the buffing compounds, I'll put a link to all of that in the description box below. I got it all on Amazon. You guys can go to Amazon and, and order it. I do really like that polisher because it's small and lightweight and you can just use one hand with it, which is really nice. I got rid of the big, heavy two-handed one that I used to use, uh, and this one's a really nice replacement. If you wanted the stickers, they are available on aircraftstickers.com or kitplayenthusiast.com. You can go to your place and get them. Um, so that's it. I'm out of here, guys. See ya.